in uh, now the next topic we'll move on to when is surgery needed for a spinal related problem the previous speaker has talked about the the knife is not needed without knife we can have a small holes or even without small holes we can remove the, all the stones now this speaker wants to come and tell tell that even a difficult problem because even small hole doesn't require it so the knife is the best way to remove it so let us see how he deals the stone then before introduce the speaker i want to uh, say about the your personal curriculum vitae dr sudhir is graduated mbb sir tutukudi government medical college then then he got a dipnb then he has got a all india first rank in the bala balu sankaran gold medal award then he completed mnms then fellowship national board in spine surgery in gangaram hospital new delhi then he went to united kingdom for fellow spine surgery fellowship in queens medical center then he went to germany saint anna hospital fellowship in endoscopic spine surgery then he went to washington university usa for the indo american spine association then he is becoming the indo american spine association visiting surgeon in washington university then he he held various position then spine asia pacific delicate council member member of social work committee executive committee member of the chennai ortho spine society spine section editor then he has got so many honors and awards and he has got a many presentation and paper presentation and many publication and he has got a more strong spine in his life So now I welcome Dr. Sudhir to talk about the spinal-related problems. Over to Dr. Sudhir, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for your kind words and uh, a very good evening uh, to all of you present here. It is indeed a great honor for me uh, to be a part of this four uh, forty-ninth CME meeting. of conducted by our ima branch kodambakkam and i would like to thank our uh, president secretary and uh, uh, venkatesai academic uh, coordinator sir for giving me this opportunity sir hope uh, you are able to visualize my screen yes sir yes sir uh, so as we all know the when we when someone utters the word spine or spine surgery there is a immediately you can see a change in the patient's or uh, Uh, reaction uh, immediately they'll say uh, is it really required and uh, and they'll get really anxious when they are told that they have a spine related problem so uh, we are trying to actually clear the doubts and uh, myths about spine and spine surgeries and uh, today i'll be presenting the topic as of when is surgery needed for spine related problems and i am dr sudhir a uh, consultant spine surgeon practicing in uh, sri ramachandra university in chennai so whenever a patient comes to us as we all know history and examination is very very important in any specialty and it is uh, true of our patients in our general uh, practice they come to us with uh, low back pain which is one of the most common symptoms and they complain of radiating pain along the leg which goes behind the thigh and the uh, leg so whenever there is radiating pain it means that there is some compression of the nerve root and if it is passing along the upper limb it means that there is some compression of the cervical nerve roots so i am i'm just going to make it uh, uh, simpler by uh, dividing into many boxes so whenever the pain is aggravated by cough sneeze or prolonged sitting or loading activities it is considered as discogenic pain which is which means that the pain is originating from the lumbar disc and whenever the low back pain is usually associated with claudication type of symptoms that is the patient will be able to walk comfortably to some distance after that the patient will have paresthesia and numbness of bilateral lower limbs and then they have to bend forwards or stoop forwards to relieve their symptoms that is called as neurogenic claudication and it is usually seen in lumbar canal stenosis whenever they are associated with early morning stiffness with small joint pain and other joint pain with polyarthralgia it usually falls in the inflammatory box whenever the patient has difficulty in turning in bed or whenever they have instability catch that is the patient says i am bending down but when i try to get up there is severe catch in my back then it usually tends to be an instability pain and whenever they are associated with loss of weight or appetite or constitutional symptoms it favors tumor or infections 
So again, as I said, examination forms a, a basic foundation for a, uh, all these specialties and it is very, very crucial in spine because the neurological examination is uh, very important because spine related problems is like mathematics. Whenever there is a problem at involving a particular Wrote only that particular dermatome or myotome will be involved. So it is uh, very difficult to miss a condition. So we have to look for tenderness or palpable, uh, uh, right? okay, so okay. palpable step, which means uh, there is some kind of step when you are palpating the spine, which means that the patient may be having lysthesis. Or you can look for deformities like in the picture, you are seeing a girl with a deformity of the spine, which is called a scoliosis. And we have to look for paraspinal muscle spasm. The uh, paraspinal muscles will be spastic in case of disc prolapse, where, wherein they go in for protective spasm to prevent the individual from moving. And finally, a detailed neurological examination from head to toe is very, very important and vital to localize the level of lesion. So today I'll be covering when is surgery needed in these common spinal conditions like disc prolapse, spine infections, lysthesis, and up to deformities. I'll be uh, crisp and short. So as we all know, the disc has two layers. The outer layer is called as the annulus fibrosis, which is a thick covering, and an inner jelly-like substance, which is called as the nucleus pulposus. So as age advances, the jelly-like substances loses its jelly consistency, and it becomes hard, and it tends to come out and when it comes out, this degenerated disc, it comes and presses the nerve root. So MRA forms the gold standard in uh, investigation modality as of now for uh, diagnosing spinal pathologies. As you can see, this is a MRA of a normal patient. You can see the vertebral bodies which have been mentioned in uh, blue color. And you can see healthy disc, which is white in color. And you can see a mild hypo intense line. This is a T2 weighted MRI image and you must be able to see the disc as a thick white structure in between the vertebral bodies. And this is an axial view of uh, an MRI and you can see this is taken at the L4 disc level. And the parts have been mentioned starting from spinous process, the posterior most, and next comes the lamina. And you can see the central triangle portion which is called as the spinal canal, which has the traversing nerve roots. We all know that the spinal cord ends at L1 and below that it is just the dura with the CSF with the nerve roots. And laterally you can see the exiting nerve roots through the neural foramen and you can see the facetal joint. So whenever there is a disc prolapse, this is what you will see in the MRI. So first we will be looking at the sagittal view and most important is the axial view to look for the side. So this is a classical example of a disc prolapse which you can compare with the image on the side. The disc has come out and it is compressing on the left side, I mean, it is on the right side for me, so it is the patient's left side. So it is compressing the patient's left nerve root. And how do you differentiate it from a canal stenosis? In a canal stenosis, the disc will usually be normal. It is basically because of the continuation of the degeneration process. The disc will not come, uh, would not have come out, but because the disc be has become degenerate, the entire load will be going through the facet joints in the back, which will hypertrophy and the ligamentum flavum will also hypertrophy and they will completely occlude the spinal canal. So this will be the picture wherein you can see facetal hypertrophy and the entire spinal canal has been obliterated to a trefoil shape because of the spinal stenosis. So why it is very, very important. Most of the common, uh, most of the times the disc prolapse is a posterolateral disc prolapse and it is commonest at L45 level. So whenever there is a classical disc prolapse, it will compress the traversing nerve root. That is, the nerve roots in the lumbar spine, they traverse through one level and they come out. So the pink color is the normal, uh, uh, commonest position and it will compress the L5 nerve root in case of L45 disc prolapse. Whereas in case of L45 foraminal disc prolapse, which is also not very rare, it can compress the exiting nerve root. So this is very, very vital in diagnosing the patient because the entire surgery and treatment depends upon the level. Whereas a central disc prolapse can compress any uh, nerve root. So the treatment is, as I said, most of the um, patients will, require, will, will uh, get better with conservative treatment. 85 to 90% of the patients will get better with conservative treatment. But the most important point is bed rest should be only for a short period. It should not exceed three days because the patient will land up in paraspinal muscle wasting and low back pain will become chronic and a persistent problem for them. And we can give NSAIDs, mild opioids, antidepressants, along with short course of steroids for a period of maximum of 10 to 14 days. We have to encourage the patient to ambulate in, inside the house and to return to activity as early as possible. Once the pain settles, we have to encourage the patient and reassure them to be on proper strict uh, back strengthening and core strengthening exercises. 
if the patient fails to improve with four to six weeks of non surgical care then we can try something called as epidural steroid injections the optimal time for up to which we can wait ranges from 4 weeks to 3 months and if the patient says that there is not even 30 to 40% of relief even up to 3 months then it is high time to think about surgery epidural injections are usually given in an outpatient uh, opd basis uh, and it is given under local anesthesia this transforaminal no root block is the latest technique wherein you use the cm guidance and you just go directly into the no root foramen and you inject local anesthesia with steroid which bathes the involved no root and will give significant relief and the bottom picture is the caudal block wherein you give the drug through the caudal epidural space so when is surgery needed in disc prolapse it is needed in case of cauda equina syndrome i'll discuss about cauda equina syndrome in the next slide and in case of neurological deficit any patient who has motor or sensory blunting it is an indication for surgery there is no point in waiting because the more we wait the result will be very bad and persistent no root tension signs failure to improve with 6 to 12 weeks of conservative treatment severe leg pain which is extending below the knee see this is very important because we have to uh, differentiate between a radiating pain and a referred pain radiating pain is the one which passes in the posterior aspect it usually crosses below the knee joint and it follows a particular dermatome always the findings in the mri should correlate with the patient's physical findings and pain distribution so this is a 36 years old male who came with severe left leg pain even after two months of conservative treatment the patient was not even able to sit for 5 minutes the patient underwent microscopic discectomy and you can see the disc fragments which have been removed the picture on the top shows a 1 inch incision through which we do micro discectomy using microscope and the bottom picture is the latest technique which is endoscopic discectomy which we do under local anesthesia the patient will be admitted in the morning we do endoscopic discectomy and the patient will be discharged the same day evening walking and it is under local anesthesia this is the uh, latest advance in spine surgery and uh, so coming to cauda equina syndrome it usually the patient presents with the triad of saddle hypesthesia in the perineal region motor weakness and bowel and bladder dysfunction and the board of onset can be slow or acute onset the commonest level involved is l45 and it is a surgical emergency and there is no role for conservative treatment when the patient presents to you with this kind of symptoms because if we operate within 8 hours of uh, presentation the improvement is uh, better whereas if you operate greater than 8 hours the patient may not uh, recover his bowel or bladder function throughout his life so this is a patient who presented to us within 4 hours and uh, complete huge disc prolapse which is occluding the canal we cannot we are not able to see the spinal canal in the axial view and uh, when i went inside i i could see the entire disc which was uh, inside the spinal canal which was removed and the patient had significant relief of symptoms coming to the next commonest pathology which we come across in our practice which is the tuberculosis of the spine it is very very common in our uh, country and it is most common form of osteoarticular tuberculosis accounting for 50% of all cases the patient usually presents with insidious onset back pain with or without radiating pain and constitutional symptoms paraplegia tends to occur in 10 to 30% of the patients and if they are not diagnosed and treated properly at the right time they may develop kyphosis or neurological complications most of the time it affects the uh, vertebral body 98% of the cases and posterior <coughs> elements is involved in only just 2% of the cases and the most commonest type is paradiscal that is one vertebra above and one vertebra below the disc will be usually be involved and man 2 is considered as non diagnostic for tb spine nowadays cb nat and lpa that is gene expert or line probe assay or the recognized tests by who which is uh, very very useful in diagnosing tb spine and mri as i said is gold standard for diagnosing uh, tuberculosis spine in the uh, tuberculosis spine and its findings so when is surgery needed in tuberculosis of spine whenever there is worsening or new onset of neurological deficit failure of conservative treatment with anti tuberculosis therapy even after starting anti tuberculosis therapy the esr or crp is not coming down or the patient's appetite or weight is not increasing then it means the patient is not responding to att pan vertebral disease that is when the entire spinal column three columns is involved vertebral body posterior structures pedicle lamina is involved or whenever there is deformity like kyphosis or instability or whenever we are in doubtful diagnosis whether it is tumor because tb is a very good mimicker it can mimic like anything and when the patient has severe intolerable pain not even able to turn in bed but we have to understand the fact that tb or tuberculosis is a medical disease and surgery is needed in spine only for these indications and these are the spine at risk signs in children when you see facetal subluxation or instability when the spine is moving 
one vertebra is moving away from the other it is definitely has to be operated so the drugs which we adopt for tibus spine is this is the latest index tb guidelines uh, by the government of india with who the four uh, primary drugs and we give uh, two uh, months of intensive therapy with four drugs and 10 months of continuation therapy with three drugs and mri has to be done at one year to assess the healing and then we can stop the drugs and these are the second line drugs whenever the patient when we encounter a multi drug uh, resistant tuberculosis so this is a 24 years old female one month after her wedding she had pain even during her wedding severe pain she was being treated conservatively with att and you can see the severe uh, changes in the mri scan and the obvious psoas abscess which has been marked in the arrows and uh, her pain was so severe that she was not even able to sit for 5 minutes the patient underwent post tier stabilization with uh grafting this is the latest technology where you bone graft on the anterior side of the spine all by the posterior approach and you can see a very good healing at the end of one year after uh, uh, without loss of correction after continuation of the anti tuberculosis treatment the next commonest thing which we see in is the spondylolisthesis this itself is a wide topic but i'll make it very short the most commonest type of listhesis which we encounter is the degenerative listhesis as a continuum of the degenerative disc disease because most of the uh, load will be transferred from the disc to the posterior elements the facet joints becomes unstable and the one vertebra moves over the other that is called as spondylolisthesis and whenever there is a lysis or break in the pars which is the most important structure for stabilizing the spine it is called as a lytic listhesis common symptom can be back pain with claudication or radicular changes when it in case of lytic lysthesis it is usually common in children and whenever a children complains persistent back pain it is better to do an x-ray to rule out lysis and the patients in high grade lysthesis they can present with altered gait with flexed hip knee and equinus posture so this is mri of degenerative lysthesis you can see one vertebra is moving over the other with complete compression of the spinal canal compressing the nerve roots however this is the example of a lytic lysthesis showing break in the pars which is seen in the ap and lateral view and the oblique view too so this is the axial view of a lytic lysthesis in lytic lysthesis the exiting nerve root usually will be compressed and not the traversing nerve root and it is very common at the l5 s1 level whereas degenerative lysthesis is very common at the l4 5 level so one most important thing which you have to bear uh, in mind when we are seeing the mri is in case of l4 5 disc prolapse as i said the nerve root will be involved is l5 because it is the traversing nerve root again the l the same l5 nerve root could be involved in l5 s1 lytic lysthesis so when we are encountering a patient with l5 nerve root involvement we have to know whether it is because of l5 s1 lysis i mean lysthesis or because of l4 5 disc prolapse because the entire treatment the treatment is totally different surgery is needed again when there is all these patients will be under conservative treatment for months together only when there is failure of this conservative treatment or neurological deficit or when they develop postural imbalance or worsening deficit then surgery is needed the surgeries which are uh, practiced is laminotomy which is you make a small hole in the lamina and uh, free the nerve roots or laminectomy wherein you remove the entire lamina and free the dura and the nerve roots this is the most commonly performed spinal fusion procedure which is called as the transforaminal lumbar interbody fusion wherein you uh, insert screws and you remove the disc decompress the spinal canal and you can see in the intraoperative image the nerve root which is completely freed and you insert a cage into the disc space wherein you create a solid fusion mass of the spinal unit and the patients will do significantly better this is the next most commonest uh, condition which we encounter is osteoporotic vertebral fractures in our clinic especially in the elderly age after 60 65 years one of the leading cause of uh, disability and morbidity because of uh, low bone mass and as per who classification uh, we all know osteoporosis is when t score is less than minus 2.5 most of the patients will get better with one month of conservative treatment whenever there is no improvement with one month of conservative treatment with nsaids and uh, thoracolumbosacral orthosis and bed rest those patients can be can go ahead with surgery and when they present with neurological deficit or progressive collapse like this they may land up in kyphosis or worsening deformity most of the patients get better with conservative treatment while few patients may they may develop something called as non union so this is a patient who has had multiple compression fractures which was treated conservatively but the recent fracture at the d12 level went on for non union you can see the fluid level in the vertebra that signifies non union and it usually appears hypo intense in t1 that is how you differentiate an acute versus a chronic fracture 
and the procedure which we usually perform for these fractures is a vertebroplasty or kyphoplasty wherein you inject cement into the fractured vertebra under local anesthesia again the patient will be admitted in the morning you inject cement the patient will be made to walk from the operation theater and they can be discharged the same day it is one of the excellent procedures which uh, which has given very good results in elderly which prevents the complications of prolonged immobilization in elderly it has significant pain relief and any spine fractures definitely most of the spine fractures nowadays they require treatment because initially we used to think that the spine fractures uh, can be treated conservatively but it requires prolonged bed rest and the patient may succumb to uh, the complication because of immobilization so this is a patient who had a history of fall from height which was managed by surgery the patient was made to walk the next day and discharged on the second post operative day this is other patient who developed fracture at the two vertebral levels this is a software engineer he wanted to mobilize immediately so this is the latest technology which is called as minimally invasive spine surgery wherein we put screws by just tab incision without opening uh, anything and then the patient will be able to uh, walk the next day and will be discharged on the first post operative day itself with uh, significant relief last few slides about tumors and deformities so any tumor or deformity when we come across we have to evaluate very carefully because in spine most of the cases most of tumors and deformities they will require surgery unless it is radio unless it is radio sensitive and if it is uh, uh, easily accessible to radiotherapy so this is a patient who had complete involvement of l3 body and uh, it is a solitary plasmocytoma and the patient had a trivial fall severe pain presented with pathological fracture so entire tumor removal and reconstruction with screws and cage and the patient was mobilized uh, in a week and uh, discharged in a week and spinal deformities the there are uh, the commonest deformities is scoliosis which is in the coronal balance the spine is a straight structure when it becomes like s it is called as scoliosis and in the lateral view when the kyphosis is exaggerated it is called as kyphosis and surgery is needed in almost in all patients most of um, most of the patients they feel that in children we should not operate but earlier the better in deformity the earlier we intervene the better will be the treatment so it, the surgery is based on age location degree and flexibility so this is a 13 year old who presented to me with 100 degree curve and three curves not a single curve and the patient was very afraid of surgery for 5 years and finally this was done for the patient and the spine was made almost straight so this is the intraoperative picture you can see after putting the screws and after osteotomy and correcting the spinal deformity this is the uh, picture so you can see the clinical difference the girl gained about 6 cm height after surgery and uh, suppose if this girl had come about 3 to 4 years back the surgery would have been much more easier and it is easy so last uh, two slides so this is a patient who came with back pain and uh, uh, after two months of conservative treatment the x-ray and mri was done elsewhere he said that absolutely there is no relief with conservative treatment when the mri was repeated we could see a tumorous lesion in the dorsal spine so i want to Uh, stress on this point mri screening of whole spine is mandatory in all patients wherein we can miss the lesions however this patient went on for surgery this patient actually came with as paraplegia and uh, went on with surgery and however the neurology didn't recover because tumor tumors uh, landing up in paraplegia has very poor prognosis so the red flags in spine conditions is back pain in children less than 60 years or elderly greater than 60 years persistent back pain night pain neurological involvement constitutional symptoms like loss of weight and appetite and deformity trauma all these forms red flags so the take home message will be history and examination is the key to uh, diagnose uh, spinal pathology and to uh, diagnose the proper level imaging studies play a very vital role in diagnosis almost all pathologies can be treated conservatively except trauma and tumors and deformities we have a very good window for conservative treatment and only those patients who fail this conservative treatment will land up in uh, undergoing any spinal surgery and uh, surgery is indicated only after this however surgery is not very scary as we used to think many years back now because of the advancement in technology and instrumentation and the training it has become very very easy and as i said spine surgeries which used to go for hours together with a uh, minimum of 10 days of hospitalization as uh, all those type of surgeries can be done on an outpatient basis nowadays and the patient can be made to mobilize immediately and spinal pathologies we have to understand when not to do surgery is very very important than when to do surgery nandri thank you thank you sir thank you, sir. Thank you dr sudhir for a first lecture regarding top to bottom then 
impossible you make it as a possible even that's the scoliosis surgery and all it's a very difficult those days now you yes. made it very simple and possible thank you sir yes, members sir. are invited to ask questions sir dr uh, chaudapa has raised his hand yes sir dr chaudapa sir go ahead you have to unmute yourself yeah, sir I, 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 i'll unmute sir i cannot able to unmute sir i will unmute, unmute sir. yeah yes sir then yes, sir i think what are the cardinal signs and symptoms where you have to refer the patient for immediate spinal surgery sir whenever you suspect a uh, neurologic involvement like nerve root impingement signs straight leg raising test is positive or whenever the patient has neurological deficit on examination if there is a power drop or sensation drop or perianal numbness these are the signs when you have to immediately refer sir and presence of constitutional symptoms back pain associated with loss of weight and appetite or back pain associated with night pain when the back pain is severe in the night then again it's a cardinal symptom thank you sir yes sir thank you sir sir uh, members any questions sir dr sudeer yes sir can i ask a question yes sir please sir. dr lakshminar and calling yes sir please sir please go ahead sir yeah. this is about uh, kyphoscoliosis due to old polio yes sir is it correctable yes sir definitely corrected yes sir is there any chance of any development of paraplegia in these patients because for a long time the spinal cord is crenated and curved yes sir. suppose to be corrected will it lead to any neurological deficit correct sir sir it is a very very uh, vital question sir spinal deformities as you say the neurological elements will be compromised but nowadays we have something called as intraoperative neuro monitoring wherein we operate and the entire neurological status will be monitored by something called as meps and ssecps so even when there is a minor drop during the surgery we will stop at that stage and will not try to overcorrect so because of that advent the incidence of neurological deficit during deformity corrective surgeries have come down drastically uh, it has come down significantly sir now the second question is yes sir in the spine yes sir your medical treatment yes sir uh, what is the appropriate time for the surgical intervention is it after completing the medical treatment or when the uh, activity of the disease is controlled sir uh, there is no uh, exact timing of as when we have to do surgery whenever there is whenever you suspect instability that is 50% of the vertebral body is getting involved then it is high time that we go and stabilize otherwise definitely the patient will land up in kyphosis because even if the tb heals the bone biomechanics will change and the patient will develop progressive kyphosis which will which will result in late onset paraplegia maybe 5 years or 10 years because of late onset gibbous internal gibbous formation so whenever you suspect instability whenever you suspect neurological involvement then immediately it has to be intervened irrespective of timing of att sir but psoas abscess as such is not an indication for surgery because most of the times psoas abscess will get cured by att itself unless the presents with some hip flexion deformity we need not do anything for psoas abscesses no several times when the patient is presenting there is a cots disease along with paraplegia yes sir at that time of course you don't aspirate the psoas abscess yes Uh, is there any surgical in intervention when a patient presents with paraplegia immediately we have to take him up for surgery at the earliest sir because tb spine is one of the good diseases in spine but that that means even after the patient develops deficit if we operate the chances of recovery is quite good because it is a soft compression by abscess so earlier you go in and decompress the spinal cord the patient may have a good neurological recovery if you delay then the prognosis will be poor no i am not saying compression due to psoas abscess i am saying the deformity of the spine which is compressing the uh, definitely spine. definitely sir in active stage of disease the deformity which is compressing will require surgery to have a good neurological improvement thank you thank you sir sir i have one question for you sir sudeep sir yes sir yes sir please i uh, a yeah, 40 years old gentleman yes, has sir. got a, a canal stenosis s5 l4 and s s5 L5 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 L
uh, impaired sensation in the bladder and also in the defecation process. Okay, sir. Okay. So, in the COVID situation, yes, because sir. doctor advised undergo surgery, yes, sir. what you suggest? Because the people say that, uh, suppose <coughs> if it is a COVID negative patient undergo surgery, yes, sir. the positive can become in, positive in the post-operative period, the mortality yes. and fatality rate will be more Correct, sir. in this present situation. So, what do you suggest? What do you advocate? Sir, 100% uh, this is an uh, absolute indication for surgery because as uh, your history wise, the patient has developed Kodaikwana syndrome. Even if the patient is positive, we have to explain the pros and cons of surgery versus conservative treatment to the patient and we have to take him up for surgery because as I said, if the patient has developed bladder and bowel involvement, it is most of the times it is throughout his life. Even mm -hmm. after surgery, it is very, very difficult to get it back. The earlier, the better. Suppose if you are not operating, then uh, it is very unfortunate. It is very unlikely that the patient will get his sensations back. So we have to explain it to him that uh, the chances of uh, acquiring COVID is there. And then we have to take him up for surgery. And I've been operating, I have uh, like um, uh, about uh, five to seven patients have operated in the past three months, fractured dislocations and two cauda equina syndromes. So that is mandatory, sir. We have to take the call. And uh, of course, it is the patient who has uh, to take the call finally. But from doctor's point of view, I think it is important. Sir, good evening. Yes, madam. Uh, I am Dr. Vidya from Chennai. I would like to ask a question regarding plasma cytoma of uh, spine. You had already mentioned regarding a case. Yes, uh, I would like to know whether surgery is, is it the treatment of choice? And uh, how is the uh, like prognosis of such patients? Prognosis is quite good in these patients, ma'am. They do well with chemotherapy also. But as I said, most of these patients, they present with to us with pathological fracture after a yes. trivial fall. So most of the times, they will require surgery either for diagnosis purpose or for stabilization and diagnosis. So that is the issue. So stabilization, I mean, surgery in uh, plasma cytoma is not to eradicate the disease, but for spinal stability and to decompress the spinal cord. Okay. However, the treatment has to be followed up with chemo or radiotherapy. This patient okay. whom I showed, she underwent radiotherapy as well as chemotherapy after the surgery. And she is seven, now it is about six years post-op. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Any question from members? Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Dr. Sudhir. Thanks a lot. You have given sir. a very Thank good, you, nice lecture.